In the 90s in general, there were a number of problems with scientific misconduct. Everything, fraud, falsification, conflicts of interest, you know, publication problems. I mean, it, the 90s, whether it was a surge in incidents or just a higher profile in the press, because quite often before that time there was this conspiracy of silence where bad things would happen and they would quickly get um, skirted or, or buried or otherwise, um, you know, never see the light of day. So in the 90s there were a number of problems at many research institutions. And it wasn't just the breaches in the responsible conduct, but there were also major breaches in the ethics of subject protection, and um, a number of people died. So Nicole Wan died, Ellen Roche died, two very high-profile deaths because both were very um, clear examples of research that had not been conducted properly. They're real ethical breaches. And the Primer Board had been talking for a long time about accreditation because there was a wonderful model for accrediting every research institution that used animals. The American Association for the Accreditation of Lab Animal Care has been accrediting animal facilities for, you know, for 30, 40 years, since the 60s, I believe. And it just struck many on our board as quite um, paradoxical that there would be accreditation and standards and a body of knowledge for the use of animals in research and none for the use of humans. And particularly since the field was growing so much more complex and so much more um, fraught. So our board really felt that accreditation was an essential next step. And we also felt it was essential that it be a grassroots-led effort and not a government-imposed one. Because as with many things, if it's required and opposed, it becomes just one more set of obligations and people are resentful. But we felt that if it was um, generated from those in the community, those who are themselves affected, it would be a more effective and ultimately a more um, embraced effort. So we decided to start an accreditation process, and it took about two or three years of talking in the boardroom about how to proceed. I cannot say enough about how deliberate and how thoughtful and how um, really meticulous with attention to every detail this board was as it was laying the groundwork. And Sandy Chodash, our then board chair, was uh, the leader of that effort, as with, as with so many other parts of Primer. Joe Byrne was highly involved, Leonard Glantz, Bob Levine. It was just a very remarkable slow dance to do it because the Primer board has wanted to do everything it touches with excellence and great care and great quality and so this was certainly no exception if anything this was the most deliberate careful thing they've ever undertaken so um, we used ALAC as our example and John Miller who was ALAC's, ALAC's executive director was on the primer board and really served as our very trustworthy and endlessly helpful guide on the journey we um, hired a woman named Sue Fish, who had been an IRB professional at BU, we hired her for a period of six months to actually help us organize the organization. She's now a board member and very involved in the organization. We also um, brought on several consultants who helped us with the whole concept of how you start an accrediting organization. Sue helped with the specifics of research, but then we brought people who knew about accrediting into the mix. and. We convened a small group at the Charles Hotel to come up with the first set of standards. And that was extremely exciting because we had to come up with the body of knowledge and the standards and frame it out. We came up with a name. We wanted to make sure that it was a human research program and not an IRB. Because again, for all these years, IRBs had been blamed for everything that went wrong, but never given the support they deserve to do things um, to the extent they wanted to. So we wanted to make certain that it was the research programs at the institutional level that were accredited and not the IRBs. Because the IRBs function within the context of the entire institution. 
they are clearly just part of the of the system. Researchers are involved, institutional officials are involved, research staff. So we wanted to make sure it was the research program that was accredited and we wanted to make sure that this would help lift the IRBs who had often been under-resourced as I mentioned earlier. So we named the organization, we incorporated it in Massachusetts, we wrote the first set of standards and then we started um, to really think about partners. And the Association of American Medical Colleges had been involved in these discussions since it first went outside the boardroom. They had been involved in a meeting we held in um, Rockville, Maryland with 50 people to talk about it. David Korn was then the Vice President for Research Affairs at AAMC. He was terrific, is still um, doing very well. He's on the faculty at Harvard and was the Associate Provost for Research, Provost for Research at Harvard for quite a while. He was terrific, and so it was decided that the AAMC would be involved in the creation of AHARP along with Primer. And then he had the very good idea that we should involve more stakeholders. And so ultimately, there were six other, or there were six organizations altogether that were involved. Um, and it was a very strong and very committed coalition. AHARP was launched, Marjorie Spears was hired as the first executive director and I believe served in that position for 10 or 11 years, and Elise Summers is the current executive director. She's a very good friend of Primer's, so it's, it's been a very, um, you know, it, as with all new ventures, it's been accomplished many of its goals and is still a work in progress, as is every organization. <laughs>